Hi, my name is Tom and I'm here to talk to you about MyGBIF, a tool for accessing wildlife information at your fingertips. So my background is I'm both an ecologist and a programmer. So day to day I work with information about wildlife, data about wildlife, and use programming to extract as much information from it as I can. So when I look around I see data everywhere through portals like GBIF. There's a lot of data out there, but most of the people just walk around completely unaware of all this information. The aim of my GBIF is to engage with these public stakeholders and make location relevant wildlife information accessible to everyone on a whole range of devices, wherever they are. So we could build a website or whatever else you might want to call it. But I don't think this is really appropriate for the people that I'm interested in. So I'm particularly interested in younger people who are perhaps particularly disconnected from the wildlife around them. So I decided that a web website wasn't really for me and there's good reason for that. First of all, there are five ways of computing. Way back we had mainframe computers, then came workstations, microcomputers and PCs. And websites are really designed for PCs. But the wave that we're in now is the mobile wave. So most people, especially those in the younger generations, use mobiles, uh, use mobile internet and mobile apps for accessing information about their world. So to put that into numbers, if we take 16 to 24 year olds, 12% of them don't have a smartphone, but a much larger percent, 40%, don't have a computer. So it really makes sense that if we want to connect with these people, we want to be connecting with them on their mobile device. So I could develop an app. Well, there's two good reasons why I didn't do this. The first is <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how to develop an app. But the second is I feel like that's the first step that everyone goes to. They either build a website or they build an app. And I just feel like we could do with thinking outside the box a little bit. So what do I mean by thinking outside the box? Well, for starters, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. There have been loads of really great um, mobile apps developed for wildlife. So for example, there's I Recall Butterflies. This has uh, 1,000 to, uh, 1, to 5,000 downloads on the uh, Android store. Or that Bird Track, that's got 10 to 50,000. That's, that's a really impressive number of downloads. Or even more than that, Project Noah, a great project involving young people especially. Uh, getting them excited about wildlife around them. But I think we need to think even higher. How about an app that has a hundred million to half a billion downloads? You know, now we're really talking. So the app that I decided to go to go and build on was Twitter. Now, if you think about it, Twitter really makes sense. It's used a lot by young people. About thirty-seven percent of young people are using Twitter. Not only that, but Twitter also comes with location information. And I can use this location information to tell people about wildlife where they are. So how does it get, how's it going to work? So MyGBIF works like this. It's all built around this hashtag, hashtag MyGBIF. All you have to do as a user of Twitter is to put that in your tweet. When you do that, I can use your location information that's embedded in your tweet to ask GBIF for information about occurrence records where you are. And that's done by creating a five kilometer radius polygon around your location and sending that to GBIF APIs. So that's great. So now I have tons of wildlife information about where you are right now. The problem is GBIF gives me Latin names. So then I have to lean on the Encyclopedia of Life using its APIs. So I send the Latin names over to the Encyclopedia of Life and I get back common names. I can also get the IUCN's threat status uh, of each species. So that's some really cool information there too. Now to display some of this information, I'm going to need maps too. So I again go to another API, this time Google, and I pull in their maps. So now I've got all this data together in one place. So from this information, what can I do? Well, I can tell them about who's recording. I can tell them what they've been recording. I can tell them where they've been recording it in their area. And most importantly, I think I can put their record in context with records from around the world, to see how their area compares to other areas. So that's what it does. 
Let's see it in action. So the process is really simple. What I do is I pair up my smartphone and I open my Twitter app. And then I start a new tweet. I'm going to type in a tweet. It can be whatever you want as long as it contains the hashtag MyGBiff. You'll also see that the little blue location icons on. So I've got my location information is going to be sent with this tweet. So I've sent that off. It's got the hashtag MyGBiff in it. And all I have to do is set down and wait. Now, this takes about a minute, um, and I've just sped it up here a little bit. In a minute's time, I get a response back from an account called uh, Nature Near Me. So I go to my notifications, and at the top here, I've got the uh, reply from Nature Near Me. It tells me I've got a personalized nature report, and it gives me a link to GBIF there too. And attached to it is this image. Now, I'm just going to go back into the presentation so you can see it's a bit more clear. So here's the image that's returned along with our tweet. There's quite a lot of information in here, so I'll just go through it step by step. First off, we have information about the user who sent it. So it's got my username, a hashtag my with the date and the location. So this is nice. This means if you want to save the image or share it with other people, you'll always be able to see uh, who it was that did it, when they did it, and where they were. Um, we've then got some natural language statements. So we've got some information here about how many species were recorded and how that relates to all other searches that have been done with MyGBIF. So you get an idea of how uh, species, how species rich your areas in comparison to all the other areas that people are tweeting about. Uh, we get some information about how many families the species come from in our area. Here we've got data presented from uh, the IUCN, which we got from the Encyclopedia of Life. We've got for each, uh, we've got across all the species, uh, what proportion fell into each of the ICN threat categories. So here we can see that most of the species in our area, 75% uh, are in the least concerned uh, category. Uh, we've got another couple of natural language statements. So it's 470 records recorded in our area. And again, it tells us how we relate to other searches. So 46% of searches have fewer records than us. And then we find out that 29 recorders have submitted records in our area. We also get this lovely heat map. Uh, so this is created in the R programming language. It's a kernel density map of uh, records in our area. So we can see there's lots of records coming in from Benson and Wallingford near where I live. Um, we also get this uh, name cloud. Uh, this is the name of all the recorders who've contributed records into the data set uh, in my area. And the size of their names are scaled to how many records they've sent in. So you can see that David Roy uh, here is one of the biggest submitters of data in our area. We also get this, uh, this rank list of, uh, of species. Uh, this is the top 10 species recorded uh, in my area. The most commonly recorded at the top. And on the x-axis, you can see how many times they've been cited. So the lesser black bat gull. There seems to be lots of records of those from my area. We also have in the, in the top right and bottom right corner some icons. So we've got the, the MyGBIF uh, logo in the top right corner. And in the bottom right, we've got the IUCN, GBIF, and the Encyclopedia of Life logos because they all contribute data uh, to this data set that I'm using. That's what I've done so far. There's there's quite a lot of other stuff that we could add in uh, that I've been prototyping. So there's this availability for mapping. So we can use uh, web services here. I've just used the, the MBN Gateway, the UK node for GBIF, and their mapping services to get uh, some nice maps, link people to the maps of, of specific species on request. Um, I've even got a prototype where I can use uh, Google Maps for directions. So here it, the user gives a species name uh, and the service will locate the, the nearest record of that species. And then using the Google Maps web services provide a link that will give you navigation directions uh, to the nearest location of that species, the nearest observation of that st uh, species to where you are presently. So there's a lot of potential for MyGBIF. It already does quite a lot. Um, hopefully you like it. It's been a lot of fun to make and uh, hopefully lots of people will have fun playing with it and uh, maybe it'll inspire other people to be creative with the, with the data that GBIF provides.